and greetings, everybody. Welcome to the Friday edition of Burn It Down with Kim Brown. This is the, the place that we burn down oppression, even if we just try to burn it down with our anger, our rage, our frustration, with our words. And we like to big up the people that are actually burning down the systems of oppressions with their actions. This is what we do here. I'd like to welcome everybody. Thank you all so much for making the time to join me. This is a very special Friday edition of BIDWKB. This is a call-in edition of the program. And kids, we've done this new format here of vertical streaming. And some of my, my esteemed moderators, <laughs> uh, seen and unseen, have had to really be on a job uh, because of all the influx of not typical BIDWKB viewers, definitely not Fire Fam. <laughs> Right. So I feel like walking a little bit on the wild side today. Whoa. Okay. Well, fuck it. If we're going to do a call in, do my fucking call in then. Okay. And make this shit for everybody, anybody to call in. And trust me, trolls, if you want to call up in here and get rowdy, you have definitely picked the right one. Okay. We're coming off the solar eclipse. My Leo energy is getting recharged. Let's argue. Let's fight, baby. What y'all want to do? So, Will is going to drop the link in the chat if he hasn't already. We definitely want to hear from our all of our folks, our usuals, our regulars. If you've never called into the show before, I definitely would love to hear from you as well. And listen, let's talk about some things, y'all. There's, there's several things percolating uh, around the interwebs. I was watching EYL this morning. Of course, they took some time to observe and remark upon the passing of OJ Simpson. I don't really have a lot to say about OJ except OJ is a piece of shit. <laughs> okay. In every way that you can think of OJ race trader, OJ class trader, OJ abuser, OJ murderer. The only fucking righteous or semi-righteous shit about OJ is the fucked up thing that he went to jail for nine years for armed robbery, for taking back his own shit. I said, OJ. <laughs> White supremacy will find ways, baby. Don't think that just because you had the God Johnny Cochran representing you, shouted that they weren't going to try to catch up with you in some way, somehow. So anyway, we can talk about OJ. I was on TikTok earlier. Um, I uh, saw a couple of TikTokers sounding the alarm that perhaps... Israel is withdrawing its forces out of southern Gaza. Again, this is all alleged per TikToker, so do not attribute this information to me. I'm just recounting what I saw others say. But uh, it's being implied that Israel is withdrawing its forces from southern Gaza because they got to stock up troops along the border because Iran allegedly is ready to let the Yapa sang. They said Lebanon pissed off, Syria pissed off. I seen this one uh, white guy TikToker saying that the Russian troops at you know the, amassing towards Israeli borders. I said, "Oh shit, this is going to be uh, very bad <laughs> for even even worse." I mean, obviously, it's the most terrible for Palestinians, but for a regional issue, this is does not portend well. So there's that. There's a myriad of things to try to get into. So if you guys want to join me. Go ahead, feel free to click on the link that Will has deposited in the chat. I want to welcome all the folks them. Let me get into the chat and see who we got in here. Let me say what's up to our folks. Um, let's see. First of all, let me say what's up to the mods. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Courtney, I know you be modding from behind the scenes. Sister, we so appreciate it, baby girl, so much. So, so much. Shout out to Latif. Shout out to my son, Tyler. Tyler's a newly appointed mod on the scene because my son doesn't miss his mother's show. And I love that about my child. <laughs> I, lo I love that about my boy. My boy supports his mama. And that's what we love about uh, our folks. So anyway, guys, what was the other thing that, that kind of caught my attention? There was a story I saw here locally that um, I, I'm, I'm curious how this actually looks like in cities across the country. But the D.C. government revealed that 
the number of opioid overdoses in the nation's capital actually almost doubled that of gun violence homicides. I think there was 290 something people killed via gun violence in the district last year, but over 500 people died of opioid overdose, right? And I think that's very significant because you hear how much attention gets paid to gun violence and homicide, which obviously we, we would like to stem those things if at all possible. Uh, but where is the outreach and the access and the resources for people who are dealing with opioid addiction or to the extent that people are dying of overdoses who are not even intentionally trying to ingest opioids? They're doing other drugs that are perhaps laced with fentanyl. We, 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 we got the test strips available, everybody, <laughs> for free. Can everybody access the, 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 the naloxone, the, the Narcan? The opioid overdose antidote is all that being distributed on a widespread and free basis? Hmm? These are questions. But then I even started to deep that out a little bit further because in America, not exclusive to America, but definitely in this country, alcohol consumption and even to extend alcoholism is deeply romanticized in this country, right? Like the, the, America is unapologetic in its absurd <laughs> alcohol consumption. So how come I never hear the numbers when it comes to public health? How many people actually died from alcohol related causes? And when you actually think that out, that's very, very, it's broad, but it's very insightful. So alcohol related causes, I'm talking about people who died from alcohol poisoning, people who may have died as a result of an overdose in combination with having consumed alcohol. I know somebody who died that way. They was drinking and, and taking Zanny bars and they, and they passed away in their sleep via overdose, right? What about the people who are dying via alcohol-related deaths as it pretends to liver failure and cirrhosis? What about the people who are dying via alcohol-related deaths as a result of being perhaps injured by another person who had been consuming alcohol or dr driving under the influence? Pedestrians, other motorists, et cetera. If you want to see them numbers, baby, <laughs> I'm sure those numbers absolutely dwarf opioid overdose and gun violence. I would be inclined to think that. But is alcoholism ever framed in the sense of it being a public health crisis in this country, ta taking the lives of, I would imagine, tens of thousands of people, maybe 100,000 people every year? Whoops. These are things that I think about. <laughs> and these are things that I wonder uh, as, as we move along into uh, about a quarter of the way through the 21st century, why are we still dealing with shit or rather in a lot of cases, not dealing with shit as though this was a hundred fucking years ago. Right. And even if we want to go back a hundred years, I'm speaking still on the alcoholism, for example, prohibition. Mm. <laughs> if you, if, if you don't know what white riots actually look like or the ways that white people actually clap back, just look no further than Capone and them doing prohibition. Let Bugsy Siegel and the motherfuckers. Right. Lucky Luciano, them niggas was not playing. <laughs> they, they was making sure that the alcohol availability was, was right there and would let the yapa sing at anybody, be, be, be it uh, Joey Sunday, who would it, what's the, what's the name that the, that the gangsters used to call the law anyway, whether it be it the police, be it their rivals, it didn't matter. Talk about white violence. Hey, y'all, how white folks be gangsters out here anyway. <laughs> Joe Friday. What about Joe Biden? He a gangster too? I, I said, yeah, no, he is a, he is a, but I said Joe Friday. That's what they used to call him. Joe Friday. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. We got um, Infinite. Oh, okay. Milan. What's up? Come on through Infinite Content. Uh, I got my cafe How you one. feel, man? Uh, I had another day yesterday. My blood pressure was up. I caused me to have a little panic attack. I had to go to the ER. Oh, so I'm damn. Just Life's coming at me fast. 
I'm sorry to hear that. Your internet is not coming at you fast, unfortunately, Infinite. Like, it, it, I'm so sorry. Can you hear me better now? It's, dra it's dragging a little bit. Look, I, I can't control the um, internet. Yeah, it is dragging. What the hell? Can, can you oh. can you hop off and, and try to uh, re rejoin us? All right, I'll, I'll bounce out and come back in. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Because we, we do want to hear from the good brother Infinite. I don't want to hear from him as though he is underwater. <laughs> though he is giving us that blue light special all through the night. Uh, Will, you said we had somebody else on deck? Hey, Kim. Hey, Alicia. who's that? It's Alicia. Ah, <laughs> what's up, niece? How are Hello. you? I'm doing really, really good. Today has been a good day. Um, <clears throat> there's been a lot. I have, we need to catch up, but um, basically just to share some news, like I turned 40 in March. Yay! Yeah. <clears throat> so oh, that was oh. really dope. Yeah, it was really awesome. Happy birthday. Thank Yay! you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I yeah, I just you. feel like I'm like really digging 40 so far. Like I'm just feeling like, you know, me and my mom had some kind of like, you know, little enmeshment stuff and I'm starting to like really cut the cable, cut the cord oh, kind of thing where I'm just like, all right, me and my son are going on a trip on our own. Like, I don't need your help at this point, you know, or your opinions. <laughs> um, but I love you anyways. But anyways, so um, and then today I just accepted my first big girl social worker job. Yeah. Um <clears throat> as a case manager yeah it's with youth link so it's going to be with working with 16 to 24 year olds like transitional age and yeah i'm super excited so i'm going to do case management and then in may i graduate with my bachelor's oh my gosh so, i remember when you were still in the middle of school i can't believe you're almost finished yep I know. That is so. exciting. And congratulations mm -hmm. on the job, Alicia. See, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, we we need people on on that kind of the inside, on that side of the mm -hmm. bureaucracy, mm -hmm. right? Folks with your awareness, your consciousness, and your politic to be hands-on with these young folks. You know what I'm saying? And I know that that's not easy work. I did have some friends that worked as social workers, and it could be overwhelming. It could be emotionally draining just because of the kinds of scenarios that that you you already know this that that, that you know some of these young folks come out of it's it, yep. it, it sometimes it could be impossible circumstances so you know that they when they by the time they come to see you you know what i mean it you know they, they there's some they're trust there. like mm -mm. they're like yeah you who and you white huh <laughs> like you you know like what do you want you want it up in my business and it's like no you know i just want to relate i want to get to know you I want to build relationships, you know, and the, the fun thing is, is that when I was 19, um, I was looking at homelessness mm -hmm. and um, looked into YouthLink and happened to apply for a program that was open. And so I stayed there for a good year and a half at YouthLink. And wow. so that was like, you know, before I had my son, like all that stuff. So it was a long time ago and that's what inspired me to like want to become a social worker because my caseworker was probably the first adult that I trusted for a, a long time um, and didn't judge me. You know, that was the big thing. Didn't judge me. Like, even though I made some man, they were telling me go door A, go door A, go door A. And I was like, no, I want C, you know, I want over there. And, you know, they were just, they would like try to guide me as best they could, but, you know, didn't judge me in the end. And then when I, you know, I did make that bit, bad decision and like fall on my face, it wasn't like, yep, see, did, you know, you did it. It was like, what are we going to do about it? You know? And um, so, so, yeah. What, what's like the population? You said 16 to 24 year olds. Are these mostly uh, black children and children of color? Um, it, yeah, it's diverse. I mean, it's in Minneapolis, it's downtown. Mm -hmm. Um, it's some people, I think there is like preferential for like people coming out of foster care or people, you know, aging out. Um, so it would be, yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited. And like I said, I just 
<clears throat> just uh, took the position today. So still learn, you know, have a lot to learn about it and everything like that. But congratulations. That's a big, yeah. big deal. We are so proud of you, Alicia. You. And proud of your boy, proud of your son as well. You know, yep. you talk about talking, uh, t turning 40. I mean, you know, people under 40 sometimes be like, oh, it's over the hill. But it's like there's a there's there is a liberation, especially as a woman. Mm -hmm. I don't I'm not sh certain to what extent men experience yes. this. Yes. But there's, no, there's, there's a real. liberatory feeling uh, once yep. you turn 40 and keep going beyond 40. It's like, fuck yeah. Like, Thank I know you that's leave it, baby. Better. Here I am. That's how it right. is. Yep. That's Right. And it's like, you know, we're, this is me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I'm gr I am grown. Like, <laughs> not to say that you're done growing, but no, not at all. But um, yeah, it's just it's good to feel like I'm coming into my own for once, you know, as as a what they call older millennial, you know, um, we're kind of there's been some terms put out there like um, what do they call uh, like but just like a baby, like like a long term, like somebody who never grows up or whatever, because we're just like you never feel like an adult. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so because I was babied by my mom so much and because of just everything else, not being able to afford my own shit for the longest and all that. You just I never felt like that qualified adult. You know what I'm saying? And so now I'm like, whatever, it doesn't even if I wasn't like qualified or whatever, it doesn't have to do with. The, the things that I've been earning it has to do with the things that I've been like working on a lot of inner work too. Like I've been doing a lot of therapy and a lot of, um, you know, work on relationships and things like that. So, so yeah, things have been going good. And then my son's turning 16 and I'm so proud of him. He's, hey. yeah, he's, um, we're going to Florida and Georgia for his 16th birthday. So that's wonderful. You guys deserve it. You guys absolutely deserve it. I hope you and the boy have a wonderful, wonderful time. And tell him happy birthday. Happy early 16th from the fire fam. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Well, I really, it was really good catching up. Thank you, Alicia. And yeah. About the alcoholism thing, though, you need to be a little, I don't know, just gentle, uh, I know, I'm so, I'm hard on alcoholics because I'm related to so many of them. You know what I'm saying? And it 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 th some of the shit I've seen, and I don't even mean like domestic violence, motherfuckers. Well, I've just I mean I've just seen poor health, early death. You know what I mean? Like just long term alcoholism. Like, yeah, statistically just, take such a detrimental effect on on mm -hmm. folks. But, and and I, and I feel as though. It's it, there's no cautionary tale like there's no, like we get a whole lot of don't overdose and, you know, be careful about drugs and da -da. I'm like, dog, the most the shit that's killing people the easiest <laughs> is right there at the liquor store. So yep. I know I'm hard on alcoholics, but but societally, you know, I mean, that's why we get that's why people get away with it, because, you know, it the you know, white power structure, like they love to have a glass of whiskey at the end of the night. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so it's just like. Uh, you know, whatever they can do to make their money off of it, you know, it doesn't, <clears throat> doesn't make any sense. Like you got, you know, they're talking about, oh, you can't have flavored vapes and things like that, but you can have like birthday cake flavored rum and like vodka that's like blueberry pie and, you know, all that stuff. And it's just like, like, what are you really doing? So yeah, it doesn't make sense. Um, what makes sense is that, you know, it keeps the me medical industry probably going too. That part. Um, yeah. Uh, there's just, you know, and it, it's sickening. Um, but thank God, like, I found relief from it, um, at least for now. You know, it's like I count every day, just I'm grateful. So I've got like nine months right now. So. Hey, that's what's up, Alicia. Congratulations. And again, I, I recognizing an issue. With, with a substance is is the important part. A lot of the alcoholics I know and have known don't even think they have a problem. You know what I mean? Like they don't even look at it as a problem. I mean, again, I know a, I know a lot of functioning alcoholics, people who went to work every day, people who took care of their families. So, I, I mean, it's, I, 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 get, I, I get it. I'm just, yeah. 
I'm just a mean person. Don't don't listen. <laughs> it's okay. No, I mean I get it. We all have our trauma and you know yeah. where it comes from. And it's just like with the men's thing, you know, it's like, you know, you gotta be you have some harsh words sometimes, but you have them for a reason. You know what I'm saying? They're there for a reason. So that's right. I, you know, here we go on been a trash. And let me tell you another thing about this nigga song on Tinder. I don't give a fuck. About this. Like, be free, fellas. It's fine. It's fine. Alicia, I love you, baby. Thank you so love much you. for calling. I'm All so right. proud of you. Free Palestine. <laughs> Thank you, baby. That's what's up. Look at our folks out here. Fire fam, fire fam. Alicia's been with us for years. You guys remember when Alicia was, was first beginning her collegiate studies or in the midway point of her collegiate studies, and now she's about to finish up. So that's what I'm talking about. Y'all throw some flame emojis up in the chat for Alicia. Out this bitch. Burr, burr, burr. You know, even to a, a Alicia's point about the alcoholism and, and how, you know, glorified and widely marketed and promoted alcoholism is, and we don't get a lot of preventative messaging around alcoholism. I was actually thinking the same thing about HIV AIDS. I'm not about to go on a tinfoil rant here. Let me let, hear me out. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna hop on and immediately hop off. So in the nineties, when I was coming up, right, there was so much messaging around safe sex, around condom usage, around stopping the transmission up, primarily of HIV AIDS, because in the 90s, I don't know, y'all kids may not believe me, <laughs> but in the 90s, uh, AIDS was was walking through communities, primarily black communities, not exclusively, but black folks, straight, gay, all the across the spectrum was taking L's from AIDS, okay? And we got heavy messaging as young people, as teenagers, around condom usage and around safe sex. I see damn near none of that now and and you know maybe it's because of of what i consume the media that i consume the age demographic that i am maybe i don't watch enough youngish <laughs> i don't watch no mtv what the fuck else the kids watch uh vh well i don't watch none of that shit so maybe they are running trojan commercials y'all remember they used to run trojans and lifestyles commercials they used to run those contraceptive commercials, especially when it comes to condoms and such, I don't see any of that messaging now. But what I do see are a bunch of commercials for prescription medications that help for people who are living with HIV um, to get down to zero transmission. And that part actually makes my heart sing. I'm so grateful and appreciative that the medical breakthroughs have uh, progressed as such that an HIV diagnosis is is not a is not a death sentence, right? People can live normal, healthy lives because of the medical advances in the treatments of HIV and AIDS. But that's where I'm like, that's where my mind fuck comes in. I'm like, oh, well, the reason we don't see preventative messaging around stopping the transmission outright of AIDS is because now there's a bunch of new customers for the pharmaceutical industry. You know, hey, don't worry about catching AIDS because or HIV. You can live with this. And we, and you just pay us $2,000 a month for, for the rest of your life for your medication. Don't worry. You can live with it. I have no idea how much HIV medication costs. I would imagine it's not cheap, though I don't know and I'm not certain. And if anybody has knowledge, feel free to chime in here. Uh, but I just, I, I thought that was... Uh, an observation by eye. Like I don't see stop the spread of AIDS anymore. I see you can live with AIDS with this expensive medicine. Just an observation, just an observation. Welcome everybody to burn it down with Kim Brown. In case you've never been here before, my name is Kim Brown. I don't like to, I don't like to say things about myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, I'm a lady them. I like to say what's on my mind. I like I love to speak from a black woman's perspective, uh, but not like the Candace Owens black woman's perspective, like actual regular black women's <laughs> perspective. <laughs> from a black woman's perspective, of someone who does not hate black people at, at all. Um, we are not anti-black over here. We are pro-black than a motherfucker out this bitch. Uh, we are pro-people. We are pro-Palestine. Shout out to Alicia. Shout out to all the Palestinians. Free, free Palestine. We are anti-imperialism. We are anti-capitalist. 
uh, we are pro-cannabis. <laughs> this, this is absolutely a pro-cannabis channel. I should have brought my J in here so I could smoke and talk and joke and, and smoke and talk and joke. Uh, we got infinite back. You said what? I said we got infinite back. Oh, boom. Okay, bring them back up here. Peace, infinite. Hey, Kim. Uh, how, how was your week? How uh, was your my week? week was really good. My week was exceptional. I had a wonderful week. Okay, it's funny that you mentioned cannabis because there are two ballot initiatives in Florida of interest to you and this channel. Initiative three is uh, legalizing recreational marijuana, and initiative four is allowing abortion care access up to 24 weeks. Hmm. I figured that, that um, you should vote in favor of those just make sure you um check the phraseology on the um on the ballot initiative so you don't don't get tricked so right. people in florida just let, let's start uh pushing awareness of that so people can um make a correct decision thank you for that infinite do you know the date of the primary or when is uh, uh, this I, i'm not certain of the date of florida primary i'm um I'm in Pennsylvania, so um, but I was uh, <laughs> you will be, be popping off about Florida. You supposed to know these things. Look, uh, I'm I have infinite uh, not, I'm infinite content, but I'm not omniscient. You look, know, people I'll can go up, that that that, that uh, look. That's what Google's for. Hey, people can, uh, but uh, I ran um, I ran didn't say said that they're gonna uh, make Israel feel it. But they didn't say that they was going to make the chopper scene. They're going to pass the burners off to their hitters. <laughs> In serious. Because um, cause, um, Hezbollah hit um, Israel with like 50 rockets uh, today. Okay. It's Israel like, like I said. Israel out here playing games. Israel out here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you, Russia, you play stupid games, you will win stupid prizes. And Russia is taking control of the Golan Heights. In Syria. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that disputed territory uh, between Israel and Syria, but you Syria mean the stolen territory? You mean the stolen, stolen territory? Right, you said it right. That's right. Uh, it's like, look, um, and uh, Israel's trying to drag us into a war. I'm like, nope, 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 nope. nope. We do not need these type of problems. I Here's promise you, we don't need these fucking problems. Here's the problem with that, though, Infinite. When Democrats come into the White House, like every Democrat, every fucking Democrat since I guess goddamn Jimmy Carter has started some fucking bullshit war to, to win re-election. Like, check the timing on all this shit. What year did Obama let the chopper sing on Gaddafi in Libya? Was that 2012, 2011? That you know sounds about right. And then here come motherfucking Bill Clinton punk ass doing shit uh, in Serbia, the Bosnia, Herzegovina. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it's like clockwork. Joe Joe Biden is is talking out of both sides of his neck. I mean, how many more statements are we going to get from Corinne Jean Pierre about you know the president's very disappointed? I can't even listen to that woman. Um, oh uh, I, I can't listen to her bullshit. She's. Terrible. I'm like, if I if I want to hear an asshole. Um, I'll fart. <laughs> I don't see how I don't see how she gets invited back to any Haitian functions. You know what I'm saying? Haitian. Oh no, no, her, her, I gotta her, turn y'all back on on the traders. She, she, she can't go to um, she can't go to the cookout. She can't go to the parade. She can't go to nothing. No. <laughs> but. Mm. I, I'm disappointed she even is able to get her hair done in DC. Like people are supposed to be like we're supposed to be turning our backs on 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 these traitorous imperialists who have the same color skin as us. Like that, like they need to be like, bastards. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not I'm not encouraging violence, but I am encouraging shunning. <laughs> like shun these motherfuckers. No, nah, you can't shun them like you, shun them like uh uh old struggle just was getting shunned at um beauty shops for years. Like who was? Oh, oh struggle edges. <laughs> Can you imagine having that much money and looking like that? Like I, I'm, I mean, the I, I, her shit I is wack. Get D. Let me tell you something. It's something about she had been able to pay somebody on the loader of coming to hook her up, and <laughs> I'm like, look, you would think so, but it's like. Ooh. I mean, wow. at least Diamond and Silk would have their little wigs tight. You know what I'm saying? Like, Diamond yeah. and Silk 
<laughs> They're like, what well, we're not going to do is come out here and look raggedy. <laughs> They're going to talk raggedy, but not look it. No, but Candace, nah, she don't care. Look, talk, and she she, she ain't, you know, no shame. Hey, oh, man. speaking of which, um, did you see um, the Breakfast Club interview with Olea Lauren where she dug in Mayor Adams' ass? So, she got straight in his ass. She is the only reason that I tuned in. Uh, somebody sent me that. And Eric Adams gave the biggest black man boomer energy that I I I, I recognize it was, straight it was straight misogyny because um once she uh, once she hemmed him up she stopped talking to her turned her back turned his back to her and only talked to Charlemagne. I'm like nigga uh you think we don't uh see what you're doing you ain't low oh he said I have done I am done listening to this woman <laughs> he said First I have off, somebody should get fired in the mayor's office I'm like Y'all let him uh, walk into that fucking um, death trap? Well, so there's that, but there's also uh, Charlemagne, uh, again, giving tremendous Gen X black man energy by allowing the disrespect of his guest to well, occur like right said, in it, front of him, right? It's like, he didn't, it, it's co it was, it's, it was um, gender just misogyny. Misogyny noir. That's what it was. Oh, absolutely. Did you, I mean, oh Eric God. Adams giving it and Charlemagne allowing it, not correcting and, it, and, and thereby into it. giving it also. But I'm like, why would y'all let this man uh, walk into uh, this fucking trap? Did y'all not know? Y'all ain't do no fucking um, Apple research? She was, and she was, and when she had that smile on her face, I'm like, oh, that's not a smile. I've seen that smile before from a black woman, and I'm like, Oh, this is not going to end well for him at all. It's a difference between um, you smiling with your lovely smile just now, and then um, her just smile. I'm like she's like, "Well, I've been waiting for this shit." Listen, there are so many younger black women, in particular, younger women. Let me not just black black women, absolutely, but not just. There's so many younger black women who I absolutely admire and look up to and wish that I could be like them when I grow up. And Ole is absolutely top five in that list because she's I so gotta get y'all on the um, air together. Huh? You said I'm what? gonna try and get both of y'all on the air together. No, we've Either, been on the air uh, together. Doing... We've been on the air really? together. I've I when? interviewed Ole. I interviewed Ole uh on Status Crew News, maybe I don't know, a year ago. And she's dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it was but it was dope. Little... Like, you should mm -hmm. go on a Lornati or invite her on uh, your show. You, I'll do a well, co-stream. Yeah, well, maybe I will. <laughs> you know what I, I'm, I, 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 I'm I, I going to try to make that I, happen, Captain. I, listen, I got to get my shit together. You can't just be inviting on fucking the, the, the nice niggas and not be nice yourself. Like, I got to get ready for Olay, okay? <laughs> like, well, Olay likes to chop. Well, the thing is, both of y'all let the chop sing, so I'm like, I'm yeah, like, but Ole yeah. lets the top sing. O Ole lets o Ole got 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 armed fucking drones out this bitch. I'm different. I got a sick <laughs> dude. I got pow pow pow. Ole got that guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ole do, become, <laughs> Ole do become with the uh, artillery to make the motherfucking street shake. You know what I'm saying? She got the, the street sweepers. Uh, I mean, again, I gotta get I gotta get my shit together before I just be you can't just bring. Oh, lay on all willy nilly. You got to be ready. And again, I don't mean ready in a confrontational way at all. Like I'm, I, I just mean that she is incredibly. He's like you got to get mentally ready. Prepared, sharp. Like she's amazing. I mean, well, she's an easy interview. I would think because number one, she got all the answers. Sway, she got all the fucking answers, and I mean that deferentially and tremendous respect. Like I love. Oh my god, let me tell you some how I love. And, and I mean this with love, seriously. I love fucking know it all black women. Love the shit out of them. Teach me something, sis. Get tell me a bunch of shit that I did not fucking know oh. that I definitely believe that you absolutely know. Like I love oh, that. Oh, like I love that from Olay. I love that from Amani Barberin. I love that from uh this Asian sister on TikTok. I think her name is Alice Chen. Uh oh, I love yeah, that I, I, I was, uh, like I, I love I love that. Yes, you know it all bitches. Tell us, tell us, <laughs> tell us more. Like, tell us oh, more. Then, then after she did the um Breakfast Club interview, because um Mayor Adams was uh talking to that book, she was like, Well, I need you to um uh have uh allegations. She came with the receipts on her channel. I will send you the link to that video. <laughs> Eric Adams.
Adams. Listen, that's what I'm saying. Eric what, what, Adams. He's the biggest listen. fuck nigga in the. Um, I, I don't know who's the bigger fuck nigga. Is it the uh, is it the governor of Maryland or Eric Adams? Uh, both. I mean, they neck and neck. Is that this? It's 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 not. It's almost not a. No, actually, it's Tim Scott. It's actually Tim Scott. Well, the thing about Eric Adams, uh, as it pertains to his his interaction with with, with Olay, like again, he just didn't. I, I'm not sure if he obviously underestimated her. He obviously didn't think much did of her who or his people. With. Well, there, there's that, or he just thought that she wouldn't have the nerve, right? Because Charlamagne don't have no fucking nerve. DJ Envy don't have no fucking nerve. I don't know who the, who the that clown ass Envy no is. fuck Envy. But it, I mean, but that, but that's my point though. That that's the kind of softball political interviews that these black politicians, in particular, are accustomed to receiving from specifically urban radio hosts or urban black urban media hosts, because these motherfuckers want to be part of the bourgeoisie and they don't want to ask Eric Adams a bunch of questions. Let me tell you one thing that that jumped out at me in that interview. Fucking DJ Envy ass was asking the mayor in about about uh, the migrants. That you know, New York is housing, and how you know, man, they had to, the kids. Uh, did they forget that? Um, he did said, they forget that Ellis hey, Island? Uh, Infinite, you cannot talk over me on my own shit, dog. That's how you get put <laughs> off. That's too, that's too much. You get you're giving me too much Leo right now. It's, it's only two Leo, son. It, it's done. You finish? Are you done? You finish? Are you done? It's not I forgot what the fuck I was going to say. God damn it, Infinite. You were talking about uh, Eric Adams and uh, DJ Envy. Oh, Coon no. Ass. That's what I was going to say. So DJ <laughs> Envy, fucking Envy Coon ass, this motherfucker going to ask Eric Adams. She said, you know, Mayor, you know, the kids couldn't go to school for a day because the migrants came and displaced them out the high school. Shut the fuck up, nigga. You sound like a fucking MAGA ass nigga. Where your red hat at, this nigga? You worried about the goddamn kids? High school children having to stay home a day and learn remotely because the migrants had to stay at the school for one fucking night so they could not get, you know, swept away in the flood of a nor'easter coming through New York City. It's just a preposterousness. That's why my new main for uh, for, 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 for Charlemagne is Charlemagne. Like, yes, you niggas is coons. You niggas is lightweight conservatives out this bitch. Maybe full ass conservatives. I'm sorry. As uh, Q Tip said, Sucker nigga, nigga, nigga. I put the sucker in the front for the ones that front. Mm -hmm. But, um, oh, oh, did you want a cop saying shit story? Sure. Oh, so check this out. This fucking Tallahassee Police uh, Department cop, fucking, I thought I sent this to your inbox. If you ever check it, uh, you would see, we, uh, she planted fucking. We we show this on the remix morning show. The one with the uh the 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 white cop pouring out the liquor and planting it on the brother. Yeah, and the dude got up. and and the guy got uh, convicted on the DUI. Like this is more. This is more bullshit allowed though. Let me tell you something. The the fucking uh cop loving saltines is all in the comments under one of the shorts where. I, uh, talking about the Chicago police murder of Dexter Reed when I said, and I still stand by this, I don't give a fuck what that goddamn shit say. Like, I don't believe the cops' versions of stuff, right? And so here, and these 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 cop-loving saltines is all in the comments mad. Oh, well, it's a good thing the police stopped this one-man crime wave before it got fucking started. I, listen, you Man, fucking fuck them, <laughs> mother, fuck them saltines. Listen, the saltines are that. salty. At all times, it's like you know they don't ever pay attention to the actual police brutality and violence that is routine. They chalk it up to a few bad apples, but these goofy motherfuckers never finish out the phrase. It's a few bad apples spoils the bunch. The bitches. problem is, is that we're dealing with uh, we're not dealing with um, bad a, a couple bad barrels. We're dealing with disease orchards. We need a brand new crop. We need we need oh, we need to till, till it all up. You know what I'm saying? Hey, what's, yeah. what's this? Is, you like is this you? Hold on. Someone like sent us something. Oh, it's Alicia. Oh. Alicia, what'd you do here, baby? She did some gifting. She gifted five memberships. Oh, Alicia, that is so beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, shit. And then other people. Lawrence, thank you so much for your cash app. And super chat supports. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, every things is happening here. I want to thank everybody. Thank you guys for the love and the support. That's beautiful. That's dope. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, infinite left. All right. 
Oh, he's back. What's going on here, Will? We are we saying goodbye to Infinite? Thank you, Infinite, for come for check coming Thanks, on, checking Infinite. in. Hmm. What's up, Will? How you feel? I'm chilling. Um, Happy East Friday. I think it was Latif sent me a short or reel uh, of a dude. For, you know, you know, you from Baltimore. Yeah, I'm from Baltimore because you know why eat crab cakes or I say to you and do but the one joint was like you know I'm from Baltimore because I greet my friends with so what's up dumbass nigga and uh, Latif said he it reminded <laughs> him of how you and I talk to each other <laughs> Latif sent me that we'll one talk to too each other. you got a shout out Carnell he, he did that he did that one that was that was true mm -hmm. yeah Latif sent me that one too he a fool Listen, that was, that's a that's a good one though. Um, Vonti got a good one too though. He got it. I'm, I'm gonna send um, Latif that one. Listen, that's a good one. Shout out to Baltimore, man. Baltimore be trying to they try to get Baltimore bad rap out here. Trump even be shitting on Baltimore sometimes. And it's like nigga, nobody asked you. <laughs> and then here come Waterhead, Melonhead ass Westmore. I really, I, I obviously the, the the collapse of the bridge is a tragedy, period, point blank. The loss of life, m m most importantly. But what I don't like overall, aside, you know, the loss of life being the tragedy and the terrible part of it, it's like this gives Westmore a national profile, and this makes this nigga look like he's a good leader. I'm leading Baltimore through through what, nigga? <laughs> what you leading? What you leading Baltimore through exactly? Anyway, Westmore is a sucker, y'all. Don't forget that. When y'all see him in 2028, when y'all see Westmore come off that Democratic bench in 2028, remember all the shit I talked about Westmore <laughs> for, for this whole time. I want y'all to remember that. And I want y'all to be like, well, Kim said he was a sucker. And I hope that factors in to how you formulate your opinion about Westmore. First and foremost, he's not even from Maryland. Let's start there. Nobody went to middle school with this nigga. Nobody went to high school with him. I'm sorry. Like, if you didn't attend primary school, that's what I'm saying. Some people should be precluded from representing certain areas. Like, I think, how the fuck Mitt Romney, Mittens, grow up in Michigan, got to be the governor of goddamn Massachusetts, and now is the senator from Utah. They just let white folks do any fucking thing out here, right? And I guess Wes Moore is close enough to white folks. They, they just let him do any fucking thing out here. So you, don't, you can just, you know what I'm saying? You got the right people back, and you can just represent anywhere. Yo, I'm, I'm, I might run for governor of California. Fuck it. <laughs> I, I ain't never lived there. I don't even think that's a requirement. You know what I'm saying? You know, Fire Fame, if y'all really had some money, and shout out to whoever won the billion dollars in one of those na nationwide lotteries. I can't recall if it was the Mega Millions or the Powerball. Whoever won the billion dollars in Oregon, God bless you. I was hoping it was Franny French or Black Magic. or <laughs> I thought it was one of our, I was really hoping <laughs> it was one of our Oregonian Fire Fam members. And I'm like, oh, 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 if it's Franny or Black Magic, they're going to break us off at least with a little something. And I, I know that in my heart. So anyway, hopefully whoever wins these big lottery jackpots or at least viewers of uh, Burning Down with Kim Brown on occasion, because <laughs> you know we 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 need a we need a ball of benefactor around here. We do, um, you know. I, I wouldn't go as far to say a a sugar parent, <laughs> a sugar daddy, a sugar mama. You know there are limits to you know the the Patreon tiers here. However, you know if somebody with with some affluence would take pity on us and <laughs> decide to, to, to prop us up. That would be awesome. So we can continue our, our anti-American rhetoric. That would be great. That would be great. Anyway, guys, what was something else that half-ass caught my attention? I was reading a story uh, from ProPublica today about the Elkhart, Indiana prosecutor, some white lady. Um, she currently represents Elkhart, Indiana, and she's the top, top prosecutor out there. A person that she had convicted for their alleged role in a drive-by shooting has filed a motion 
uh, alleging that she coerced false testimony. And I can't call her name, but Elkhart, Indiana, go to ProPublica. They just wrote about the shit today. I think they just published it, this story today or a couple of days, this week, definitely. So anyway, what the attorney is alleging is that his client, who is currently serving 55 years for his alleged role in a drive-by shooting that took the life of a young woman, he claims that the prosecutor had convicted two people for the same crime, that both his client and another man who was convicted for passing the gun to the eventual gunman, they both were convicted for the same thing. How can two people pass one person one gun? One person passed the, passed the shooter the gun and the other one did not, yet two people were both convicted for the same crime. And the lawyer's arguing that you can't do that. <laughs> that that the uh, the first person convicted of the gun charge gave false testimony at the second person's trial. So anyway, but ProPublica, if you guys want to check out their work, because they continue to do ongoing work examining the role of prosecutors and how many convictions, uh, especially for those people who have been convicted and sentenced to death or life without parole, that these prosecutors are engaging in shady dealings. And we saw that up close and personal with the whole saga around Keith Davis Jr. in Baltimore when Marilyn Mosby was the state's attorney for Baltimore, right? Like she just did, just, just, just did her office did horrible work. They were chastised repeatedly by numerous judges <laughs> for, for their ongoing persecution, unjustifiable persecution of Keith Davis Jr. And eventually he was set free. But unfortunately some of these prosecutors get to do fuckery for literal decades before any of it is is properly uncovered, usually by the media, by the way, usually these people's offices and, it, you know, institutions like the Department of Justice, like they are usually not the ones collecting these fucking rogue prosecutors. Usually it's the community and sometimes by extension, the media. So there is that. So anywho. Thank you guys so much for everybody that's showing up in the chat. Do us a favor, Afro's guys. Here. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Afro's here. Okay, okay. Do us a favor, guys. Um, like the video because we're we're doing these vertical streams, so we're getting more viewers. But I noticed I'm like, well, we don't even we didn't even crack a hundred likes. So people just like it and moving on, or, or watching and moving on. So we need. A little bit of engagement. We know the Fire Fam always engages. So do me a favor. Thank you so much, Damien Stoner Loner, for coming through. Wendy, thank you so much. Who is this? Are some of these, so some names I'm trying to discern are whether well, not they friend or foe. <laughs> to be to be quite to be quite uh honest. Who is this? Wesley is saying a billion dollars could make someone into a a citizen <laughs> could make someone into a full fledged citizen. Listen, let me tell you something a billion dollars. There is no citizenship in a billion dollars, beloved. If you have a billion dollars, you're a citizen anywhere the fuck you want to be, right? Under capitalism, money talks and bullshit runs, runs a marathon, right? So. <laughs> Uh, who and uh, are you suggesting that I am not a citizen, Wesley? I can't tell your tone because I don't like fucking chats. Lucretia Williams, not down with the pilgrims. Thank you so much, good sis. Um, I would renounce my citizenship to this raggedy motherfucker tonight. Can how what wh where do I go do that at? Where can I submit that application? <laughs> and listen, if we have any any especially moneyed whites, not just regular old you know, broke whites. If we have any moneyed whites stopping through the troll, listen, y'all can send me back to Africa tomorrow, beloveds. Dollar sign, B-I-D-W-K-B on the cash app, Venmo at B-I-D-W-K-B, paypal.me slash B-I-D-W-K-B. Let me be clear. 
Will would take would take you up on that offer as well. So double up your donation money whites if you want us to go back to Africa, because guess what? We would go. <laughs> Do not threaten us with a good time because we would take you up. We would do, <laughs> we would take you up on that. So you can run us the money immediately and we would be right there <laughs> to, on, on the shores of Ghana, fucking living our best African American lives. You know what I'm saying? Well, fuck America. We'd be living our best African lives. So anyway, Afra, come on up here, Afra. Now you saw uh, infinite content already Leo quite a bit. So <laughs> let's, let's keep that in mind. Let's keep that in mind. What's Should going I turn on? my camera this way? Uh, I don't know. How, how Will, can you give her direction? Yeah, after just move to the um just like an inch to the uh to the left. Or do No, no, no. No, that's yeah. No. Okay, sit this way. Yeah. You still want to fill out the screen. So yeah, right there is perfect. Say right there. Guillermo. I was like, who's Guillermo? <laughs> it's Will. Uh, I know that. You know, hey, sorry, Will. Infinite. Infinite just sent us a super chat. Say, I am sorry for oh. the ter terrible audio. I will get a new, what, Mac. So you don't need a new Mac in May. Your new, just go get you an ethernet cord. Um, infinite don't rely on the Wi-Fi when you're trying to uh, have these kinds of conversations. You know what I'm saying? Go get your Ethernet cord and do it from your laptop. Just a suggestion. How are you feeling, Afra? Hey, I was like, I was about to clean my face. I was like, oh, it's a call show. Let me keep on last night's makeup. Hey, <laughs> ride it through. Don't do that. Don't don't you do, we gotta we have to do better better skin care habits as we move up this uh <laughs> this age ladder. You can't be sleeping in your makeup. I mean, I like I kind of started at like midnight, so it's really still today's, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I've just been running, running, running. So it's like it's fine. So but you know, I'm good about the skincare most of the time. I don't really do the makeup. I was like, okay, I'm gonna just keep it. Until I get off and then I'm going to go wash it. But yeah, Kim. What's up? What's up? Okay. I got a question. Well, so we're on air. So I won't go into specifics. But I want to know your interest. And in, um, I think well, I, I think I did tell you something about it. So how do y'all choose, you know, like when you're thinking about guests that you want to have on your show versus guests you want to have on BPM or if you're going to do it on Wednesdays with women versus like everybody on a Tuesday or Thursday, how do you decide about that? It's not. So I am actually just kind of at a point where we were able to switch away from for this show away from restream and we're back on StreamYard now. So I am comfortable booking guests on the show now but we haven't had guests in such a long time i was just having this conversation uh and i'm like i don't even know where to begin in terms of reaching out i'm like who do i even want to talk to so i'm still trying to figure out who would i reach out to to be on on this show and i'm 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 not there yet uh for for the remix it's it, I, it's not like a process whoever has a guest tells everybody else hey y'all i got a guest <laughs> coming on and everybody's like oh okay cool you know what i mean so yeah remixes uh you know it's 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 worker driven right whoever wants to do whatever can do whatever nobody there's no boss on the remix okay okay yeah no because i because well, i just actually, air doctor is kind of the boss so i, I stand corrected so which no. is hilarious to me how'd that happen <laughs> <laughs> but it's weird though because he's not like like the general manager or the store manager. He's just kind of like the assistant manager over the rest of us, right? But that's it. He's only the assistant manager. So because y'all because y'all decided that he could be. <laughs> well, he he took on the role, and it's like, all right, well, you good at assistant manager, and so so go ahead, go ahead and 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 assistant manager. You know what I'm saying? You 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 count down the register at night. That's fine. 
<laughs> no problem. And That's I say this like, as somebody who used to count down the registers at night. So I, I don't, I'm not, cla I know I got retail jokes. That's because I used to work retail, y'all. So I, I know <laughs> that retail struggle life. It, it is a struggle. Okay. Okay. I got, okay. So yeah. So if, so if one person like, I don't care. Cause I, cause I still, I still was like mystified about how the unicorn party ended up on the show. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I mean, who who brought them on? Who was who was featured in the uh, the opening segment? Whose face was on there? Because <laughs> that's whoever that is. That's who booked it. I forgot. It was a while back, but it was a really interesting. Um, yes. So you know, so I did. I did. Re I did. Um, because I just happened to be on. I'm not going to name any names, but I did reach out and say like, "Oh yeah, would you be interested?" You know, like, "Oh, this person's interested." And it was like, "Nope, I'm good." And I was like. And so I'm like, I kind of want to ask a follow up question, but I'm also just like, I don't know if I want to ask a follow up question. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. And th wait, this is for something that you suggested. I'm gonna suggest it to you, and if if you say you ain't interested, and in I'm like, okay, I'll let it be. Okay. What's the best way to 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 make send my suggestion? Uh, anyway, I mean, it's, I, I have, listen, there are, I, I, uh, there, there's a number of things that I, that, re, that is re asking my response and I have not responded in a timely manner in, in no way whatsoever. So unfortunately I'm just not good at, at checking the things that, that have my name on them. So I, 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 don't, I don't have a, I don't have a good answer. Okay. I do not have a good answer. Uh, well, do you want do you want to do you want to what it is pre? I think I already said something to you. You say you you be you like okay cool, but I don't know if you actually gonna get around to it. I don't know. <laughs> is somebody is somebody running for Eleanor Holmes Norton seat? Oh right, you did mention that. Well, the guy, I mean, uh, the 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 candidate. I I think he would be perfect to to have on BPM in the morning and on, I the, on the remix. Yeah, so I'll so I'll send it to you if you want to have him. You know, if you want to have him as a guest on on either or, on either or both shows, and then. And then I remember, I what well, it's been a couple of years now, but we were talking about the other one, um, the guy that got arrested for um, black identity extremists. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's, especially now, like there's still um, something there if you'd be interested. So, yeah. Okay. And I'm not pitching me yet, but maybe one day. Uh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. Um, but I will pitch. When are we going to the theater, Kim? We have to do another adventure to theater. I want that show that I wanted to take you to is gone, but I do still want to take you to another show because, because y'all, Kim took me to some shows last year. It was so cool. So I was like, okay, I gotta take Kim to Woolly Mammoth, like Black Women Led, blah, 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 blah. So I honestly, so. I'm trying to be a little judicious with my coins this summer because I there's there's probably a lot of shows that I'm going to end up passing on because there uh, there's like bigger shows that I want to see so I want to go see Incubus. I at, wasn't even know. <laughs> but but the, so that's I mean that's in New York. That's a New York uh thing at the end of august and then i just found out that wu tang and red man are going to be performing on 420 at the at the cannabis festival at rfk oh. stadium so i said oh boy wu tang and red man you say i mean there's no it, it's impossible i cannot not go to that <laughs> it's like and i'm like god damn it that is not in the budget, but it's going to have to be, we're going to have to fit it in the fucking budget because this is Wu-Tang and Red Man in D.C. on 420. That, that that has Kim Brown written all, all over it, all over it. So there's, the, what was the third thing I was trying to do? Oh, trying to go uh, back to the shy for my butt day. And I can, and, and then I thought there was something else. So anyway, I, and I haven't really seen any shows 
any theater shows that have caught my attention. I did kind of, I was slightly interested in seeing the Book of Mormon because I still haven't seen it. And I keep hearing how funny it is. I did want to see it. And then a friend of mine was able to hook my mom up with tickets to the Rick James play that was. Oh, uh, I heard you say that. Yeah. At the National Theater. And then my mom wanted to take me. I'm like, eh. You know, I mean, and there's nothing against the play. I was just like, eh, like my mama got to go. So that was kind of the most important thing to me. I didn't have to go. So I don't know. Like you and I kind of lucked up into um, that play that we saw on Broadway, The White Girl in Danger. I mean, because that was like a just a gem that neither one of us, like we didn't have any expectation about okay. this play and we didn't know anything about it. Didn't know, didn't know shit about it. I'm like, the white girl in danger. That sounds, that's, the title got me. And then it was so good. <laughs> and, okay. and so well done. And so that was a treat. And when we saw the Alanis Morissette play too, the Jagged Little Pill, that was good as well. So yeah. I do want to go to the theater, but I haven't even looked and seen what else. I want to. I wanted to take you. I I kept trying. I'm like I wanted to take you. I want. I didn't want you to spend to go. I wanted to take you to that show. It's gone now because that's why I kept on bugging you. Because because I wanted to take you, but we could get something else in, and maybe we can even. I put the plug up. I was like, maybe we can even get a plug for 420. We'll see. But <laughs> but Wu I definitely and Red Man Wu Tang and Red Man. And let me tell y'all, Fire Fam, if I do end up making it to the show. I normally discourage, it's not because I'm big time, it's because I have bad anxiety. I don't like people coming up to me, I'm strangers and shit. I'm like, ah, stranger! <laughs> so anyway, so, but I'm saying, but if you do see me at the Red Man show, you better come say what's up. I'm talking about Slap 5 and everything. I, I you At a Red Man function, I, it's, Red Man and Wu-Tang is probably the most approachable I will ever be because that's, I'm deeply in my element at a Wu-Tang and Red Man show. And I know shouldn't be too many fuck boys and fuck girls at the fucking Red Man and Wu-Tang show. So if you see me out there, you absolutely come say what's up at the Red Man show. But if you see me at the mall, keep it pushing. <laughs> I'm gonna look for Kim. <laughs> I'm gonna food court. Just give me I'm the I'm gonna try nod. to get the plug, but you just gotta answer your, you gotta answer something, a call, a text or something, because you remember I was, you know, I have some woo affiliations. I'm not making no promises, but I'm just going to go and get on the line and see what I can see. And then, and maybe some cannabis festival affiliations. So, mm -hmm. and I always mean to go and I always miss it. So. And trust me, like, I'm not, I don't need to, I don't need no, no backstage, nothing. nothing I mean, nothing. I like a backstage. Mm -hmm. I know, but I mean, I'm just saying like, I, I, I listen. Red Man has met his quota for being uh, a, a an awesome person to be a fan of. Like he has been nice to me on enough occasions. I don't want to give him a. I don't know. I don't want to give him another chance to fuck it up. Like he he's he he has he's like five for five. This thing is is flawless in in the live meetups, and I do not want to give Reggie an opportunity to have a, a bad day. But so I've said I've. I'm cool. I don't need to. There's nobody. No. There's nobody I need to say what's up no. to backstage. So long as I can rock out with my cock out at the Wu Tang and Red Man show, I will be more than happy. Y'all, Kim is up here, Kimming. Now listen, we went all the way to the show, and then I was like, okay, and like they did the meet and greet. Like, okay, come on, Kim, we gonna go meet and greet. Like, no, I had to, like I, it was a good show. We don't need to meet, but Kim, we right here. Nope, 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 nope. Like, but she, I already had told her, I had stood up in front of everybody, like, and I want you to be on my friend Kim show. Like, nope, so nope, let's nope, get nope. the info. So look, so this is what we're going to do is we're going to get the hookup, but we get the hookup for the backstage, all, like, we got to go. Like, that. we have to go. We have to say hi to the people. You know, I'm, <laughs> we're going to be in full, we're going to be in full Leo mode. Like, yes. Is, oh, you that girl? Yes. She's that girl. I'm that girl. We are them. But see, and, and that's, that's the thing. Do. I don't want to be like, hey, Reg, you remember me? You know what I mean? Or no, no like, you don't have me. to be like, hey, do you remember? You'd be like, hey, I'm Kim. I'm that girl. He's going to be like, oh, wait a minute. Because honestly, sometimes, like, I have, like, no, legit, I have actually met. This happened at um Broccoli City Fest. I got, so I got one of the, you know, a plug into the situation. And we're, you know, uh, and I brought a friend along and we're in the backstage VIP, whatever, whatever. And so this actor walks in with a couple people and we were in this section. Like my friend had said, that. I was like, girl, you know, like 
I had sat there, sit there because it was empty, but I knew I, I was like, I'm pretty sure my VIP was not that VIP, but okay, whatever. And so they come over, you know, smiling, whatever. And I just felt kind of like, oh, you know, like, oh, he's this friendly and I know, you know, but I felt like familiar, like we know each other, whatever. But then we took pictures and said hi. And I told him, I, you know, I was like, I really appreciate you're doing a great job on, you know, on the show. And, you know, so thankful you do. I'm like so excited. And, you know, congratulations. Good. For whatever reason, I felt like, you know, like I was like, good job. Like I would do to my little brother or something. It was just, it was like my, it was like, you know, your heart or your mind knows, even if you don't remember exactly. So I had to think about it and think about it. And I was like, I don't think I just know him from that show. Sure enough. I went back through my photos and we had hung out two years back right before the pandemic or at that time. And then before that, we met through somebody else. And that's happened to me a few times. So I'm saying all this to say he was being familiar and I was being familiar, but we didn't know exactly what I'm saying that to say, even if Redman don't exactly remember, the vibes are always there, Kim. He gonna remember. I know that, but I don't I, be. I, so I, I I believe in, you know, let's let's leave things on a high note. And there's, there's you can't leave me notes. on a high note. There's very high notes. Like red is fine. Like red don't have nothing else. Like red, like red man has been so nice to me. I, I mean, and I'm, I, it's, it, there are three occasions that come to mind, four that come to mind that red has just been so nice to me. Never a creep, you know, never, not once just been uh, just amazing. Like, oh I don't want to fuck that up. I, I'm fine. My memories of Red Man are perfect. Like there can be no improvement upon it. Like I'm a lot. I just want to. I just want to be in the crowd. I want to throw my W's up. I want to say fuck you, Red Man, because any any real Red Man fan knows that when you go to the show, Red is going to say tell the crowd to say fuck you, Red Man, <laughs> and say fuck you, Red Man, fuck you, Red Man, like. Yes, that that I I want all of that. I want all of that. I don't want. I, I can't. I can't be mistaken for the groupies. That was always one of no. my no. No, but I'm you saying like it. not not from him ever. But you know, I would be in proximity, and so would the groupies. So somebody walking in to the room, not hotel room or anything like that, but someone walking into the situation would not necessarily be able to differentiate me from the groupies because we just girls back there, right? So, well, I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I mean, but I'm, but I'm an artist and I, ha and, and you know, and I'm a pretty girl, so it's always dealing with that, like, you know, and honestly, I, like, it's like, I don't, not to say that I don't care, I'm not, like, I'm not going to be mistaken for a groupie and neither are you. Like I'm here for a purpose and a reason. That's like when I get mistaken for, oh, are you the assistant? No, bitch, I'm the director. I can't control what other people's perception and misogyny and you know what I'm saying like their sexism. I, you you know, but the people that know who you are and supposed to be will know. So, uh, so the so the plug is probably gonna be something. If if I get the plug, the plug is probably not gonna be like a regular ticket. It'll probably be like, oh, you you get a pass to go here, and you just gonna have to go. That's all. Sorry. I will keep it in mind. I, I, just, I just, like I said, I, when I found out that the show was coming to town, I just got really excited because that, that, that's a hard, I mean, I, I, I have passed on a number of shows that I would really like to see. And I don't think I, I could bring it. It, I don't think it's within me to pass up on Wu Tang and Red Man on the same fucking stage. Like that's impossible. Impossible. And we missed them last year. So. I did miss Red and Meth at uh Howard Theater. So I and again and I didn't Brooklyn. Know about that because I don't even be checked. I don't be I don't I'm not I'm not plugged into the to the live music uh scene like I was, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because ultimately I have spent thousands of dollars <laughs> on concert tickets. And and by and large, I have seen mostly everybody that I have wanted to see, with some exceptions. Uh, not that not many exceptions, just like maybe a handful. There's a handful of folks. And most of these are older acts that I haven't seen. So but everybody on the rap side, I think I've seen them. I think I've seen them. But I I, I do not want to miss Wu-Tang and Red Man in person in DC okay. on 420. It's that's that that's a must go. That's a must go. Where are we? Oh shit! Okay, we we good. Wills are we got? What's it? It's at eight thirty. Will, what's your time looking like? I'm surprised none of none of the trolly wolies decided to pull up. 
You know what I'm saying? That's fine. I Wait, really you've had trolls come on air? Hey, would I? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Why so you not? <laughs> Let's let's argue. You want to argue? Let's argue. You know, I and again, these are YouTube trolls. Like, come on. <laughs> I mean, they don't want to show their faces. Oh, and, and, and nor would I expect them to. But even if they didn't, you know what I'm saying? Well, what they gonna say anyway? It's gonna be something derogatory about my looks, or you know, you monkeys, and it's gonna be something along them lines. And to be honest, like in in some instances i am rather uh entertained by both races of and misogyny <laughs> like because again you have to consider the source it's like uh i'm uh, okay fine you can call me ugly sure <laughs> i mean you, they you? could be a liar if they want to sure what, what about you what about you though do, 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 do i'm saying so anyway but i'm glad though I'm, I, I appreciate it. You know, I, I, you know, the trolls understood where the limitations are <laughs> and, and I, and I dig that, you know what I'm saying? That's a tremendous amount of self-awareness. So congratulations to you trolls. You guys. Latif really said we, Latif, what Latif, Latif said, um, he super chatted and said, we're, what did he say? We don't take the high road here. <laughs> the high road. We don't, don't take know. the high road here. <laughs> I, can't, I can't read that sign, baby. What? <laughs> do you like ice fishing <laughs> i feel like that is a subtext for something else robert f um i've never been ice fishing i support the concept of fishing i come from country folks who fish the rivers of central virginia for generations um, I, ice fishing, I'm going to have to say no, actually, because I don't like ice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am, I am an African blooded person. I, I need warmth. It's got to be at least 65 or better. That's how I know I'm not of this continent, even though I know my ancestors have been on this continent for hundreds of years. I, I, I'm still not adjusted to the weather. <laughs> I'm still not adjusted to the weather. And I got white ancestors and they don't be looking out in the wintertime. The white ancestors gave me none of the seemingly inherent by physiological equipment that white folks have to withstand winter. I have none of those things. And, I, and I'm disappointed in my white ancestors that they are not looking out for me from the grave. And that's fucked up. That's why they racist. You know what I'm saying? So anyway. Who is this? Mr. Finity? <laughs> Hey, I'm reading. I'm reading your super chat for you, Mr. Finn. What is this? Oh, I gotta go back. Mr. Faulty says, "Thanks for showing up tonight, Kim. Love your stories." Oh, thanks, Mr. Faulty. Well, Mr. Faulty, thank you so much because you sent a super chat and a glowing, a glowing compliment. I I will tell y'all quickly my red man stories, and then I'll turn y'all loose. You like Before you have a new one. Well, so I, I can think of four. There might be a fifth. But let me think of uh, the so four that I can tell you. Everybody know who Red Man is, first of all? Red Man and Reggie Noble. What the album. There is a Dark Side. Muddy Waters. Docs the Name. Hopping out planes. Docs the Name. Cop the Frame. Back to Relieve the Pain. Hater. X for foe, don't piss capo, hit the safe in case you to switch the code, nigga. X for foe. Who knows what X for foe means, Red Man fans? I'm knocking somebody right the fuck out. That's what X for foe means. So anyway, oh. first time, the first know. time I met Red Man actually begins several days before I actually met Red Man. <laughs> I was living on Temple's campus, Temple University in Philadelphia. I was living at Temple Towers, which was a little on on slash off campus apartments at 13th and Cecil B. Moore. My mom had come up from Maryland with a couple of my relatives and they were coming to visit and just to hang out. We were going to go around Philly and enjoy ourselves. And as we're leaving Temple Towers and walking to the car, a bird shit on my head. I couldn't believe it. A bird shit on my head okay and the That's family horrible. member 
the family member that was with us said, oh my God, that's such a good sign. That is a sign of good luck. And I was like, really? <laughs> because I've never had a bird shit on my head before or since. I was <laughs> horrified that like we had to go back into the house immediately, wash my hair. It was gross. But my family member said that was a sign of good luck. I was like, okay. Days later, who comes to the radio station that I was interning at? Red and Meth. And I can't remember were they promoting the Blackout album, which was their joint album together released on Def Jam. They may have been. Yes, they had to have been. Um, so Red comes to the studio. Red MF come to the studio. Method Man is not in a good mood. Meth is very tall and he's very sullen. And I remember him kind of hoodied up, you know what I'm saying? Yo, what's up, niggas? You know what I'm saying? He wasn't talking a lot. But Red, on the other hand, was extremely gregarious, outgoing. He hopped into the DJ booth on the turntables and uh, took took over the mix from Cosmic Kev. Like, and Red's a very good DJ, by the way. Like, he's actually quality DJ out here. So... The, I wish I had my pictures here because I could show y'all. So when I saw him, I remember I was just like beaming and like the pictures that I have, the, y'all, the cheese on my face is just tremendous. So I was like red. So I I had actually given him a letter that I had typed and that I had given to Russell Simmons actually the year before at one of the hip hop empowerment summits because in December of 98, Redman saved my life at him and Meth show at the Ritz nightclub. He saved me from being crushed in the crowd. He pulled me out of the crowd, onto the stage, took me off stage. Uh, he literally saved my life. Like I've, I've, mm -hmm. I've never thought before I, that I was ever going to lose consciousness, right? So I was so impressed by Redman for doing that. I wrote a letter to Russell Simmons that I hand delivered to Russell Simmons and I gave another copy of that letter to Redman that same night that I met him at the radio station. And he had no memory. He had no memory whatsoever of ever pulling me out of the crowd and saving my life. He just, he just took my word for it. He just took my word for it. So right as there, he's finishing up his drops. You know, what's up, y'all? It's Redman, you know what I'm saying? Coming in the building, Power 99, blah, blah, blah. So before he leaves, I was like, you know, Red, can I get a picture? Of course, I have my little Kodak, you know, 35 millimeter, chink, 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 you know. And he's like, you got a boyfriend? I said, yeah. He said, all right, we're going to take these pictures to make your boyfriend mad. I said, okay. <laughs> so you can make him mad. That's fine. <laughs> make him mad. <laughs> He'd be all right. He'd be all right. So oh let's say, fast forward about three months later, maybe two to three months later, maybe not even that long, maybe a couple weeks later, the, the, the blackout release party is happening in New York at the Kit Kat Club, Red and Meth are performing live, the radio station along with the record label got a little fan bus together and we went up the road to New York, I'm doing a call and tell everybody it's KB, we're on the party bus going up to NYC, what's up y'all make some noise, ah! So we did all that and read, whoo. So backstage after the show, like Red re re recognized me. He remembered me. He's like, hey, what's up, Ma? Can you give me a big hug? Of course, I can't. I I'm I'm just I'm just done. Like this nigga, he don't ever have to speak to me ever again in my life. He's already been so nice to me. So we're back in the little green room or whatever. It's full of people. All of the obviously is a lot of his people, like Nork people in there. Cause he had um during one part of his of of his performance, like he threw like his coat in in the audience, right? And then whoever had his coat came backstage. He was like, "Yeah, nigga, I grabbed your coat." He's like, "Yeah, nigga, I seen you when you grabbed it." You know, what I'm <laughs> so it was it was it was obviously a lot of crew love in there. I remember I actually got a picture with Warren G that night. I met Warren G, but Red was like, and I have this picture somewhere. I have to find it. But he was like, "Come on, you know, come smoke." He passing me to Jay, and he he had me. He asked me. He. <laughs> He had me sit on his lap, y'all. I almost died. I about fucking died sitting on this man's lap. And again, I say this, the uh, 
never this nigga didn't put his hands nowhere he wasn't supposed to you know what i'm saying he wasn't trying to touch me in my ass he wasn't trying to cop a feel like he was just cool you know what I mean? he was just cool so anyway fast forward fast forward maybe i guess this all had to have been in the same promotional timeline as the blackout album because red mf came back to temple campus they came to temple's campus and they performed I don't know what they call it now. They it was called the Leah Course Center. What's it called? Infinite, right there on Broad Street, where where the basketball team plays. They performed there, and I got I had a couple of my homies came up from Maryland. Shout out to Nat, Markel, Tyrone, Regina. <laughs> they, they all came up uh, to come to the show because I had the tickets. I had to hook up on the tickets. So, Red, I I was backstage. And after the after they were performing, they were kind of like in a general area. And then they started to walk down the hallway and the security guard kind of closed the curtains behind them. And so even though Red had been chatting with me, I didn't make the assumption that I could just go with them. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't I didn't assume that at all, right? Cause it was like Red and Meth and a couple of chicks. And I'm like, um, okay, so. I'm sure the look on my face when a security man like closed the curtain, I'm sure the look on my face, I know I look like a, a, a sad puppy that had been passed up at the pound. Like, oh. Wait, <laughs> like, so they left you behind? Here come Red from behind the curtain. Hey, yo, let Kim back here. Kim can come back here. Yay. Ding. Lit Yay. up like a Christmas tree. So I go back there. And again, it's chicks back there obviously on on other time than me and they they talking to meth and i'm talking you know me and red are just rapping like you know and he's looking at them and looking at me and i'm looking at him and looking at them and i'm like man i don't believe this ain't i i, I shouldn't be back here <laughs> because because the, the, the other arrangements are, are, are trying to be made here and i'm not part of these and i'm okay not being part of these arrangements per se because again i never wanted to be confused with the girls on groupie time although red man to red knew i dug his ass you know what i'm saying he he just had to say the correct where he just had to say sim sim salabim and them doors would have opened up you know what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't and, oh, I, and that's cool I'm okay. I'm so okay that he didn't because every again, red. Uh, uh, what time is that? What time am I on? Three. Let me make this the last time because this is the last time that I saw him. So I think it was 2006. It was the original Rock the Bells tour, the first inaugural Rock the Bells tour, not the joints that ended up coming to like the amphitheaters and stuff. This was at the 930 Club. And I remember it was, I remember this, this MC named Supernatural opened up the show and it was a couple other cats. It was somebody else on the show and I can't remember who it was, but Red closed the show. And when I tell you he shut this bitch down, he shut the motherfucking 930 Club down, Shorty. I mean, it was such a dope ass live show. Red is unfuckwittable live. <laughs> so after the show, outside the 930 Club, I see the tour bus and I'm like... Again, I, I I have all the misgivings. I never want to be mistaken as a groupie, but I did want to speak. I, I wanted to say what's up. So I'm standing outside and it's cold. It's November. And I see DJ Cool. And I go up and talk to DJ Cool. And Cool is cool per usual. Dope, dope fella. So finally, uh, Red comes out. And I was like, hey, what's going on? And he was like, I know you. I said, you do know me. He's like, I can't call your name. I said, I know. He's like, but I know you though. I said, I know you know me. And I said, I, I, I did. I guess I told him Kim. And he was like, yeah, Kim, Kim, what's up? Yo, I ain't seen you in a while. He was like, come on the bus, yo. Come on, let's get, let's smoke a little bit. So I get on the bus and again, it's the groupie girls. <laughs> to get them. Uh, I just, I'm not, I'm just not comfortable. I'm not comfortable. I don't, I just, I, he, he knows what kind of time I'm on or not on. And that's fine. I just don't. I just don't, I just never, no, I'm not comfortable with this. So anyway, I even have pictures from that night. He actually took the pictures. This was before cell phones, obviously had the cameras handy and accessible. So I still had the little Kodak camera and took an actual selfie with Redman holding the little Kodak disposable camera. And he, he took two really good pictures that I still have. Mm -hmm. uh, so listen, again, 
on a high note, you know what I'm saying? That's on a high note. Red took her selfies, you know, wanted to smoke, hugs, hugs. You know, I, I don't, let me leave that man. I'm going I'm to leave that man in peace. <laughs> I'm going to let him be. And I'm so we're going to see the show place. and I can't, if, if we going to go see, if we get a plug, it's probably going to be exactly up there and they're going to be all right. It's going to be fine. Okay. Well, I will. I, we will see. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. We will see how that goes. Don't I you leave me hanging, Kimberly. Well, I will give it serious and deep consideration. I, I, but I, I'm totally, I'm totally fine being on the RFK Stadium grounds, just watching the show from the audience, because that's 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 the folk doctor spot. He's 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 fine just existing and showing up in the jam. I mean, I told I told you how I thought. Well, I don't want should I call names or no names. I told you how I know exactly what you mean about that, like with my rapper friend. And then like anytime I, because I know people meet so many people and I've had people who are not really up here, try to, you know, play me for it's most of the time. It's like somebody in the entourage would be on the dumb stuff and that's who be bringing and inviting so-called groupies. Right. It, it, half the time it's not the actual person. So that's why he's like, yes, you, I know, please come hang out. Like the others are for entertaining other people. But, but because of those experiences, like I always, anybody, anywhere, I always introduce myself to everyone in a space because we're all humans, right? Mm -hmm. And so I did this because I don't want to be like, oh yeah, hey, and they're like, I'm sorry, who? You know, plus my hair be changing as y'all see. So I did that one particular time. Actually, like I said, that same thing with, the, um, that, that actor was there with, uh, someone else. It was other people that I had met before there, but I said to everybody, oh, hi, I'm Afra. Oh, hi, you know, da, da, you know, getting everyone's name. Because honestly, sometimes I know a face and I don't know a name and I know I should, you know, it's whatever. And when I got to that particular friend that now I call a friend, like even family, and I was like, oh, hey, I'm Afra. He was like, Af Afra. He was like, yo, everybody, this is my homegirl, Afra. She's an amazing singer. She's da, da, da. She's like, she's all, she not even just a singer. She's an activist. She always got my back. Like, she has an amazing voice. Well, I was like, what? Okay, can anybody else tell me nothing? Because you already know who it is. This particular rapper that said, I have an amazing voice. So nobody else can tell me I can't sing. Period. And, you know, and I was like, okay, from that time on, I never acted like, oh, hey, because I'm like, okay, we're cool. We're solid now. We, we move we we've moved up and escalated into friendship and family. Okay, so we're good now. But I do understand. And so that's why I just always say, like, I understand. Like, I'm not friends with this man. Like, I mean, we was never friends. You know what I'm saying? But that's we why was, I always introduce myself to everyone because people forget. We was we were pleasant acquaintances. You know what I'm saying? Acquaintances Again, is good. You know, I, I it's, it's totally fine for me. Sith Lord Prince, thank you so much, man. I, 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 I just listen, listen, I listen. I, I, I've met all my favorite people, man. Like, there's nobody out here. Uh, well, let me, except for like the the obvious untouchables. Like, I've never met Stevie Wonder. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's there's obviously giants that I would love to eventually cross paths with. But in terms of the people from my generation, by and large, again, some some exceptions in terms of people that I would like to meet. Like, I've never met Dream Hampton. I would love to meet Dream really? Hampton. Oh my God. Like well, dream is a, uh, she, she's, and I don't, again, I don't look up to many people, but I do look up. I've always looked up to dream Hampton. I've looked up to dream Hampton ever since I was 13. So anyway, but like in terms, in terms of people that are quote celebrities, right? Like, so, or even artists. So there's not, there's not many on the list that I haven't met of my personal favorites. Like I've never met Badu, but I have met Jill. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I, I, I have met Outkast. You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to think who else, who who's important to me. I don't even know if I want to meet Dave Chappelle no more, man. But because <laughs> I, I feel like I would, I I feel like I would have to tell him a little bit about himself. And I'm sure Dave would like And you could. Huh? And you and you could. Yeah, I hope I don't that you to. do. Because I don't, because I. You can I, have a conversation with him. I guess so. But I ultimately, Dave is probably going to be on some fuck you shit, which is fine. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't, I don't want. I, I, I like don't know Chappelle. that he would be. I think so. I like Chappelle enough that I don't want I don't want Dave Chappelle to say fuck you, Kim. 
<laughs> and mean it. I, you know what I mean? I feel That's like cool. if you have a con- you can have a conversation. I've had conversations with people, and you know, perspective is because the other thing is like when you got to think about some of the, all of us are shaped by who you know, like who we interact with, right? So if if you who has a differing opinion and actually something of value to share don't want to talk to him and meanwhile people that just want to be like yeah yeah that's funny or like add on some more you know fuel to the fire like no and by the way el manifesto asked did he shot did he shotgun you the blunt no no (laughs) he didn't he didn't didn't. but that's fine and again uh anyway uh (laughs) <laughs> it's, such, it's, such, it's such a high note. I don't want to, you know what I mean? Again, like I, I, I've been lucky. You know what I'm saying? Red Man was not an asshole to me. Ghostface Killer, not an asshole. Snoop Dogg, not an asshole. Jill Scott, not an asshole. Outcast, not assholes. Like, I mean, I, I feel like I've had a, I've had a good run. I don't need to, Afra, I, I don't need to get not an asshole. To get huh? I said Afra, not an asshole. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like most deaf. Like, I mean, I've, I, 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 all, a lot of the artists that I've fucked with that I've had the opportunity to cross paths with, they've been cool. You know what I'm saying? But I also know that people sometimes have bad days. Like Meth, like that night, I mean, Meth, was he an outright dick? No, I'd say he was a, a semi dick. But at the same time, I don't hold that against him. Number one, it was 25 years ago. <laughs> Second of all, people are entitled to have off days or off nights so you know and so so i get that so anyway i i'm i'm a lit we'll see afro let me not say no let me not outright say thank you because it's hard because also just what you're talking about it's hard for me to and you and i talked about this and that was part of your situation like it's hard to be in certain spaces because a lot of times you have to go solo because you have either like folks that'll be doing too much that will end up in that space that you don't want to be in. Or you have folks that are way too like reserved or hotty totty and just like, Oh, hip hop. I don't want, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's like nobody in the middle that could just be chill. Like just be like, just be a fucking human being. And just like, we all here, like we, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're all humans. We've got, like I said, if you have a conversation, like we just haven't come like, Okay, well, and, and he don't matter. He don't mind. You well, you already know Talib is my dude, right? That's my that's my homie. And so, like, from us meeting and the random way we met, met and then kept in touch. You know, say like I've met other people with it, and you know some of the people that he hangs at. I know some people like I've learned now, like this one. Oh yeah, I don't fuck with this one. I, you know, like he don't fuck with this person. They don't fuck with him. You know, and so you know, I'm all in the middle. Like you know, I'll be over here with y'all. And then I'll be over here with the people that be fucking with some of the people y'all be with. And I'm just over here like I'm Switzerland, but not because if I have a conversation with somebody, I'm going to be, I'll I'll be respectful because I respect myself and I respect other humans, but I'm going to be very straightforward about whatever I think in that moment. And we can just talk and it's good to have people that can do that. And you're one of those people, Kimberly. I guess Um, you are. We'll see. We'll see, but I won't, I won't outright rule it out. We'll see. I mean, we're talking actually. I haven't cool. been so to the Wu Tang show. Weekend. I was too young. I was the, I was the girl next door, like that. They was always saying, you know, like not go home, Roger, but it felt it was getting go home, Roger, because I was like underage. So it's like, get your ass out of here. Like you can't be, I was right there, but I can't be right there because I'm not of age for all of the foolishness that was going on. So we'll see. I I will. No, you know, I this is we're talking. We're talking about this Saturday. So we'll see how this. I mean, it can happen. Out. Just be ready. Just answer the phone. I can do that. I can do that, y'all. I'm gonna I'm put out the call. All right. We'll and see. see what we'll somebody has said. But listen, Afra, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a let this go because it's almost nine, and Will has been such the trooper. Guillermo. <laughs> Such the team player, you know what I'm saying? From the Himalayas. Guillermo, oh. will you please follow me on Instagram? So Will is the gotcha. very gifted on IG. Afra is Afra Sings on IG. So follow our folks. Follow the this somewhere. B-I-D-W-K-B. <laughs> Not somewhere. <laughs> somewhere out there. Over the rainbow. <laughs> the pale moonlight. 
somewhere thinking of me. Hey, baby, you're too good for the chat. You can absolutely kick rocks, Kelvin. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta, you you gotta. Uh, what do you call it? But that's not even trolling. Like I, I, you know what? You know, talk your shit, Kevin. I, I dig that actually. I'm too good <laughs> for you. You know what I'm saying? Like you too. Yes. Oh yes. God. Elevate. Elevate and depart. <laughs> you too good for the chat. No worries. I. Is that like red? Kevin. Red said, "Fred, I'm too sexy for this chat." Hey, <laughs> Bye. You know, don't don't be the sexiest person in the chat by yourself, Captain. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> chat ain't sexy enough for you by all means. Push off. <laughs> all right. Too sexy for the chat. Yep. What, is, yep. Likes to talk a whole lot. I'm loquacious. Which is totally, totally fine. Sith Lord Prince, you see these fools. Hey, and and listen, we're gonna do this again. We usually do try to do a live call-in show at least once a month. Uh, and by the way, trolls, if you do find your way back here, you could always you could you could say with your whole chest, you could always click on the link. You could always Captain was banned. <laughs> come through. Because again, I'm I'm not afraid. Y'all yeah, y'all can come say whatever y'all got to say. Will has Will has the 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 directives to to let the trolls talk. <laughs> like I, I told him, I said if so, I said if a troll call up here, let them talk. You know what I'm saying? We're not here to cut you off. This is a free speech zone, right? Never right, troll. <laughs> Ain't y'all worried about the free speech and shit? You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, this is a free speech space, baby. Come on up here and say what you want to say. Sorry, so a correction, because anyway. someone thought I said Tyler. No, not Tyler, the creator. No, I'm not. I'm not like that young and cool. I mean, I'm young, but like I don't know him yet. No, Talib Kweli. Yes, I know. I know everybody older than me. <laughs> I'm the little sister from you know, like, and the girl from around the from around like the corner. What? Not the corner. What do you call it? Across the street, next door. Yeah. Yup. So y'all be looking out. We'll let you know when we do this again next month. Thanks, Afra. I appreciate you tuning in and calling in and always supporting and supporting BPM as well in the chat too. So appreciate that. Yes. Thanks. Even when I was, even when I was trolling, um, ear doctors talking about what you mean, me and, um, um, Zinzi talking about what you mean? He don't know me. He's talking about, uh, uh, this somebody named Afra scene. <laughs> Air doctor smokes a lot of weed, like 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 some people I know. Like no, myself. he came back and said, "Of course I know you." So I was like, "Okay, okay," but we were being silly. But yes, yeah, thank you for all. Thank you for thank you for being you for always oh, bringing us you great stories. And I've been seeing some of the stories that you brought us on some of the larger platforms as well. So they've been picking up. So people and I be sharing. So people are picking up wow. things. Thank yeah, you. I appreciate that, Arthur. Thank you. We thank love you, Kim. Me. Thank you so much. I love you too, baby. So gang, now it's time to say good night to all my Negro and non-Negro friends. I appreciate everyone that tuned in. Thank you so much to everybody that is a member. I, like To be able to see the member icons next to the people's names in the chat now that I know we got a little rando influx of randos. It's like, oh, right, our folks, yes. And even the people that are not the members, Sith Lord Prince, I know you, you were rider. For, from, from day so shout out Damien thank you so much for all that you do Alicia love you Dawn Bird who else is in here of course Afra of course Tyler my son of course Latif thank you guys to P says to absolute pieces Holly Wendy thank you guys I see some of these comments been held listen y'all so for my mods especially if the trolls come in here and, and for the, our fire fam also Y'all, don't, I, I appreciate y'all defending me when these motherfuckers come in here talking sideways, you know what I'm saying? But I say let them. <laughs> on, on some level, let them. Because, baby, girls and boys and non-binary folks, we have to consider the source, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, anything you say about me, I can only assume that, in the negative, of course, anything negative said about me in a YouTube chat, I can only assume the person... A, a, extolling such perspectives are likely, you know, thrice times worse <laughs> than I could ever be. So it's like, ah, oh, okay, well, fuck it. Somebody came in here and Will said, some, somebody came in here and said, I look like Gene Simmons. And it's like, pop, pop, why? <laughs> Yo, 
young, you you lucky someone my age actually knows who Gene Simmons is. Good luck trying to tell someone 35 and I don't know who the fuck Gene Simmons is. Again, people be telling on themselves. And it's like, nigga, you wish I look like Gene Simmons, please. <laughs> you look like Gene Simmons. So anyway, I don't, I don't mind insults about my looks and shit like that because again, consider the fucking source. So there's that. So anyway, y'all don't feel no kind of way. I appreciate y'all riding, coming to my defense and mods holding such comments. I appreciate that. But now nah, y'all can let them joint slide. I don't care. <laughs> Y'all, we we recognize sucker energy when when we see it, right? So just let the fools tell on themselves. I dig that. I love it. So anyway, a lot of projection, a lot of projection. So anywho, gang, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Alicia, thank you so much for calling. Afra Infinite, thank you guys. Uh, did I anybody else? Will, thank you to Will for for holding on for this evening. And uh, we will see you guys back here on Tuesday for the Tuesday edition of Burn It Down with Kim Brown. Don't forget tomorrow, Black Power Media. Saturdays with Renee. Y'all tune in for that Sundays with the ear doctor. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday mornings with the Remix Morning Show, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Oh, fuck, a.m. Oh, our disability support chat is tomorrow. So shout out to Anna, Mama Lorraine, Learn Life, Abby. Tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern, the Around the Fire Disability Support Chat for, for our new viewers. Uh, I am a disabled person. We like to hold conversations once or twice a month <laughs> uh, about issues surrounding disability, ableism, accessibility. You do not have to be disabled to come participate in the Around the Fire Disability Support Chat. You could be disabled adjacent. You could be non-disabled. You might have questions, concerns, whatever the fuck. Uh, go to the community section tomorrow or to patreon.com slash BIDWKB. I will post the Zoom link and all that information there tomorrow. And the support chat is also tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern. We'd love it if you made some time to hang out. Will, is there anything else I'm, I'm forgetting, supposed to say? Um, all right. Will said no. there's nothing else, yeah. guys. So. Yeah, no. <laughs> Oh, um, yeah, no, I, I can't think of nothing right now. Okay. My All bad. Right. Everybody have a good night. Thanks for the support. Yes, absolutely, you guys. Thank you guys so much for all of your support, and we'll see y'all back here on Tuesday. Thank you so much to Will and Malay. See y'all later. Bye-bye, y'all. Peace, peace, peace. peace.